welcome to Theo Trade. This is Don Kaufman. April 19th, 2024. S&P futures down some 46 handles with just about 25 minutes left inside of your trading week. The volatility animal is waking up. That and much more here, of course, on this Theo Trade weekend update. Now, Hopefully I don't sound too excited, but uh, for those of you that uh, know a little bit about uh, me, I am a volatility animal myself, and uh, the sight of the S&P is being down some 50 handles. Look, it's not about being bearish. It's about, well, volatility, and right now, there's just no question it's starting to expand. A couple of the things that I want to mention quite in detail on this weekend's update here Forget about the charts for just a moment. You know, <clears throat> last weekend, I propositioned the point that, you know, look, we are right, we're right on the edge of really coming into some much more heavier volatility. And we talked last weekend's update expressly about tech and how tech, there was no damage inflicted on tech whatsoever. Oh, that has changed. Okay, we are in fact starting to see some real damage, some real implications at this point. Uh, and you got to be a little concerned that NVIDIA, which I've reiterated time and again, last weekend's video on Wednesday's video, this is what got us here in the S&Ps and it's getting destroyed in today's trading session. And one of the reasons I wanted to record while the marketplace is still open, you have NVIDIA down just shy of almost 10% Lots of time left in the clock. Look, <clears throat> I'm not discounting the ability for the marketplace to start to, to rally back, or to rip to the upside over here. But I'm going to show you uh, specifically, momentarily, okay, that there's some real cause for concern moving forward. And one of the statements you're going to hear me make time and again on this evening's video here is that, are we there yet? And the answer to that is unequivocally no. You know, why do I say that? Like, oh, let's actually start, okay, with a few of the obvious points. And today's trade <clears throat> makes that very, very clear. Allow me to explain. So the S&Ps are down just about 50 handles, which is only 1%. It's not that significant of a decline. Meanwhile, the NASDAQ is off a cool 2%. At the exact same time, do you realize the Dow was actually up? So we have, <clears throat> if you will, I'm just going to scrape the surface of this. We have this like kind of wicked almost divergence. We're still seeing rotate. We're still seeing rotations going on. <clears throat> In fact, today, uh, I mean, it's as clear as day if I actually will mark this up for a second. Obviously, we're coming out of tech. We're coming out of tech in a big way. NVIDIA is actually taking one of the most significant hits. Uh, count Netflix out. Look, it's, <clears throat> Netflix just does not have the market capitalization to get it done in terms of pushing the markets around. But NVIDIA absolutely does. There's no question that Meta is playing a significant role. Uh, Amazon has finally taken a little bit of heat. But at the exact same time I'm saying that, look at the energy sector, which is up. Of course, 1%. Now, time out. Everybody's going to point their fingers, okay? They're going to be wagging the fingers. They're going to be like, oh, yeah, but energy should be up because there's geopolitical risk. Yeah, you know, I would I would buy that one if, uh, if not for the fact that, uh, so why are the financials up? Because <clears throat> the financials are up one and a quarter percent with tech getting absolutely hammered in here. I do not like this. Why do I not like this? This is the XLF. I mean, I'll scroll down to the bottom of the screen over here. Let me get this hour off here. I'll scroll down to the bottom of the screen. You take a look at some of the financials. Goldman Sachs, it's big. JP Morgan's up almost 2%. Bank of America's up 3%, okay? Wouldn't they also feel some degree of impact from geopolitical risk? Oh, of course not, right? <clears throat> We're seeing a rotation right now. We're seeing a rotation. That is not good. And why I say that there's, you know, concerns for correlation, oh, let me get really specific. When was the last time you saw the S&Ps down 1%? You cruise over here. This is the S&P 100. This is why you need to be concerned, okay? S&P 100, there are 65 advancers over here. 
And there's one thing, okay, that we can bring to fruition very early on. And I'll just say it as plain as day. Look, <clears throat> markets do not capitulate, okay, to any stretch of the imagination when you have, for instance, a positive advanced decline line, okay? We're not even seeing real sell side activity. We're seeing right now, okay, these rotations where, bear with me, <clears throat> we were smashing financials over the last couple of weeks. In fact, uh, bring up auto expected moves to help kind of delineate this. But, um, you know, a few weeks ago, this is now three weeks ago, you saw a break to the downside, of course, of the financials. Last week, the financials got, oh, hideous, look away. It's like two standard deviations. This week, the financials are actually going to finish the week higher. Kind of ironic because, again, <clears throat> we're seeing more of a rotation than we are just full sell side activity. <clears throat> Meanwhile, at the exact same time the financials are bid, now you're actually seeing some of the tech stocks get whacked. And this is exactly what I was propositioning on last weekend's update. That, <clears throat> I mean, look, tech is still, okay, it's, it's starting to get some damage inflicted, right? It's, it's got a dent in its head at this point, but you got to put this in perspective. You know, look at Meta here on a year-to-date basis, still up 37%, okay? And when I start, you know, are we there yet? And I'll keep coming back to that because the reality is, you know, don't, don't tell me is, is the marketplace oversold. Yeah, I think you could make an argument that the S&Ps probably are oversold, okay? But that would be on a daily, okay? Meaning that like, oh, so the S&Ps, by the way, now are only up 4% a year-to-date basis, but that's only on a daily chart. And we can actually pull this up if you're into technicals and so forth. You're like, look, it's oversold. Yeah, that's on a daily. And then we actually start to snap this to a weekly. And the weekly, the irony is, as soon as you go to the weekly chart, holy crap, we just actually hit what is the sell indicator, okay? Which implies that, oh boy, I, I kind of get what you're going at with, with this, Don. And then I'm actually going to go over here to the monthly chart. The monthly chart hasn't even hit selling indicator. And that is, again, where there's so many causes for concern over here. But the big, the big one is, okay, so now tech is starting to take on some water, but we're still playing the rotation game, okay? And the bottom line is... <clears throat> You need, if you're going to get capitulation and just a rip back to the upside, I think you need to see like, you know, 90, 95 products trading to the downside. And I like to be, you know, when I do these videos, look, okay, I like to be incredibly specific. Like you need to be able to leave this video and think like, what exactly am I looking for? I'll tell you exactly what you're looking for. In the S&P 100, okay, right now. Like, I get it. You know, there's 15 minutes to go to the cash close. Spoos are down 55 handles. You're like, oh, except if you looked at the advanced decline line, you're like, oh, look, in my opinion, there's 65 other things that could be sold into. I mean, if this marketplace is open a few more hours, eh, they could just start selling 65 other products. You need to see 90 products trading to the downside, maybe 10 to the upside. And that's why I say, are we there yet? Of course, we're not there yet. Okay? Don't call this capitulation. All right, you can call it a little oversold, but that again is on the daily chart. On an intraday basis, we're oversold. On the daily chart this week, of course this week we're getting hammered, right? This week, that line right there is a 100 point move from where we started the week. Look at the expected moves here, okay? Right here is where we started the week. That was the lower edge of expected move. That is exactly, okay, $100.36 decline. Right now, yeah, we're about 50 handles outside of that. Outside! So we're not, though, at a two standard deviation move. And at the first sign of some sell side activity, let's, let's not all get kinds of crazy out there. Because uh, look, this is what markets do. And I said, like the volatility animal, okay, just waking up, you know, warming up a little bit, if you will. But no, we're not there yet. And that's. That is the crux of what I want to get at. Now, let me get really, really specific. So clearly I have heavy, heavy degrees of concerns about the fact that we're not seeing correlation. Like it's not a warm and fuzzy thing to be seeing sell side activity of this magnitude, which it is pretty good magnitude, you know, today's move or whatever, it's like 1%. But statistically significant would be like, you know, the NASDAQ could finish today close down to 3%. 3% is statistically significant. We haven't seen 
those kind of horrendous moves. Moreover, like last night, last night there was geopolitical risk, but that geopolitical risk paved a path all the way to 49.63, okay? And I could still leave some 30 handles. I don't know if we're going to make it down that far, but you guys kind of get the point. Paved the path a little bit lower already in the overnight, you know, uh, marketplace. But again, don't, don't think that I'm discounting the ability for us to bounce back higher because I'm not trying to paint that picture. We could have a rip, you know, to the upside on Monday. We could have a rip to the upside on Monday and Tuesday. But my point being, the bigger point here is that we're just starting to really scratch the surface of volatility. And as I said, the volatility animal is waking up. And that's why I keep putting there, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Okay. I have very annoying kids that ask that question all the time, all right? And uh, traders ask the same question. And the answer to you is no, we're not there yet. You can't possibly be there if you're not seeing better degrees of correlation. All right, so tech damage starting yet inflicted. The QQQ, let's bring up the NASDAQ. And in the NASDAQ, it's expected moves. This is a big move. All right, that much I'll give you is, you know, I was mentioning this on last weekend's update. I'm like, eh, we're trickling to the downside, but the, nothing has happened to the NASDAQ yet. Okay. This week it happened. And this is exactly what I set you up for last weekend. It happened and you're outside of, this is like over a two standard deviation move in, uh, in the queues. So the queues definitely taken on, you know, a little bit of heat, but in a larger sense, then I want you to look at some of the tech stocks themselves. Okay. Apple, hitting a very, very critical level, right at the 400 level. It's through it right now, but it has earnings. Now, ugh, the earnings coming next week, in my opinion, couldn't come at a worse time because everything right now is going to be looked at with almost like a negative eye. So it doesn't matter, you know, what some of these stocks say. And by the way, I wanted to bring up NVIDIA because NVIDIA doesn't have earnings. So NVIDIA is just, you know, it's out there and loving every minute of it. I mean, it's it's getting hammered now over 10% today. But Microsoft, oh, this is going to be big cause for concern over here. Huge. Okay. On top of it, you have Apple, but Apple is not next week. Apple's the week after, but Apple's already gotten, okay. This is one that is scathed. There's no question. Apple already got hammered. So it's out of the equation anyway. You got a little bit of an Amazon issue. Okay. Now, Amazon, let's, let's talk about Amazon for just a moment. Amazon, okay, is starting to take a hit. Its earnings are not, okay, not next week. They're also the week after, which is going to call into question some of the other stocks that are going to be releasing earnings a little sooner than that. Uh, Google, things are going to get very interesting because it could have implications. It's cloud business versus like Amazon, right? Obviously, Meta, okay? Meta, can't stress this enough. It's only a few days removed from its all-time high. And as I say, some damage is starting to be inflicted. But the amazing thing right now is the number of really key levels. Like if you look at Meta, right? I would say this is a fairly key level right here at the 480. If you looked at Microsoft, okay? In terms of Microsoft, I'd say this is fairly key level here right at uh, what? At the 400, okay? And it just keeps going and going and going with everything that's at such critical levels. And, you know, you start looking at NVIDIA, you know, that already happened, okay? I mean, that thing, uh, you know, next stop, I don't know, could easily be 700, even 650 at this point. You can see I, I actually marked a, a poor risk reward way back here at the end of January, somewhere around like the 625 level. Uh, for those of you also that remember, I did an entire video about NVIDIA and how critical the 770 level was, okay? That was months ago now. And, and here we are trading literally right in that wheelhouse once again. Nevertheless, again, there's a lot to be concerned about because there's this earnings that are on deck. It, in my opinion, like, look, could the earnings save, you know, a, uh, a meltdown in meta? Yeah, but only temporarily, okay? And to me, at this point, risk is clearly to the downside. They don't actually knock the ball out of the park Everything's going to be looked at with a negative eye at this point, following some of the sell side activity. Again, the one thing I, I stress to you, 
This marketplace is not about geopolitical risk. Geopolitical risk, again, continues to be a match being thrown into a pool of gasoline. The markets are doing their own thing right now. If it was geopolitical risk, you wouldn't see an advanced decline line that was positive like this. You're seeing the unwind, okay, of the AI trade right now. No question about it. You know, I can also go down to the bottom of my screen. I can also bring up, uh, you know, here you go, Broadcom. Broadcom also taking a broader hit, only tuned about 5%. But this week here, okay, it's fairly horrendous, all right? Through and through, it's fairly horrendous, especially when it comes to some of that uh, that AI tech trade over there. All right, so earnings are coming at obviously very critical time. And, and again, uh, the concern over here is it can take a marketplace that's bloody and beaten and you can bounce off of earnings. No question about it, right? So I want to get very two-sided. This is volatility. Don't think I'm saying like, oh, we're just going straight down. Volatility is a never a straight path to the dark side. Volatility doesn't mean we just go straight down. Volatility is going to include some wicked rip your face off rallies. But here's the key. The earnings could spark the rip your face off rally, but almost unquestionably, they're going to come back in and sell it. And that is why I'm so concerned because the correlation's not there. Now, completely switch gears over here. Other areas worth noting, okay, the dollar hanging tough near highs, okay, we actually saw some rotation back into the bond market, but I think the bond market may come into play again next week. If the bonds continue to sell off, it's look, it's just going to put more pressure into the S&Ps, okay? And uh, probably the biggest thing that's that's on my mind right now is volatility. Of course, people look at VIX, okay? Look, I, I just VIX does not do it for me. VIX does not do it for Don. Uh, I will look at things like VVIX, volatility, the volatility index, uh, very close to where its highs have been, but uh, much more importantly and, and appropriately, I would look at volatility futures at this point. And we are right now, okay, uh, and I'm timing this thing just perfectly, we're basically at a flat okay, volatility skew, which basically implies that we're going from what was a contango that looks like this into a backwardation, but right now vol is flat. What that means, okay, is the risk now, 33-day okay, risk in May. In fact, I'm going to freeze the screen and actually highlight this because it's so imperative that we understand. This is the May, okay? And right here happens to be the June. Take a look at the last price. We're 1780 at 1795. We've seen several times throughout the course of even today's session and overnight where the volatility has flattened out and even inverted. And what this implies is that we are in the throes okay, of much heavier volatility. The volatility is so high that the 33-day vol is exceeding, exceeding, if you will, okay, the 60-day vol. And that basically means, you know, well, the world is blowing up right now, but should subside okay, inside of the next two months. It, uh, it changes, if you will, the nature, okay, of the entire beast. And that's why, you know, I entitled this, of course, the volatility animal is waking up. Uh, first of all, I am the volatility animal and it's definitely waking up out there. If the vol, uh, you know, these volatility futures, if they really start to invert though, that's when you just get downright sketchy. That's when you can see like incredible degrees of capitulation start to hit markets. I mean, look, you need these things to happen. Okay, you don't just want these things. You need them to happen. You need to see greater degrees of correlation. We can bounce, okay, without greater degrees of correlation. But you go out assume at that point we're not bottomed yet. You know, we're not there yet. We can go out there and we can look at volatility futures, but until they invert and things get crazy, okay, again, we're simply not there yet. Last, but definitely not least, as we do each and every weekend here at Theotrade SPX, the mother of all products. The SPX uh, appears in the next five minutes to be closing outside the lower edge of an expected move. That is, okay, only the second time that this has occurred this year. Uh, granted, we're only in April, you know, mid-April. It is unusual, okay, even more unusual given the fact that, you know, we're having almost a 150 point move this week, I'll tell you another really, to me, unusual area. Next week's expected move. Now, time out. 
This is not yet set in stone, but next week's expected move is only $97. That looks a little bit light to me. You see these huge bouts of volatility. Things are getting all kinds of crazy out there. And yet they're only propositioning again about $100 anticipation of movement. So coming into this weekend, look, there's, there is the threat of some geopolitical risk. I can see that being priced into some degree over the weekend, but there's only a $45 expected move for Monday. Um, just be on the lookout for real raging volatility to kind of break out. And, and if vol does start to really explode, again, even if we rally, assume they're going to come back in and sell it. But if we really start to break into some heavier bouts of volatility, the vol futures start to invert, look for those heavier degrees of correlation before even considering, okay, if we're at a short-term bottom. Again, uh, the volatility animal is waking up. Thanks, everybody, for joining us here at Theo Trade. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye.